let's start our presentation. Uh, so in this uh, presentation, we will be talking about uh, first the request response strategy in Scrappy with details. Then we will cover the most important settings in Scrappy, how to set up everything. Also, we will uh, we will check a real world world example how to integrate Scrappy with Zite smart, uh, smart proxy. Then we will move to dashboards and we'll review middlewares, how to intervene response processing and request processing and how to uh, tune everything in the way of uh, request response. And then we will uh, <coughs> check how to make uh, the pipelines in Scrappy and, for example, how to clean data before storing it in the database. Okay, so the agenda is clear and let's get started. First of all, let's review the detailed uh, schema of request response in Scrappy. We start from Spider, then Spider sends a request and Scrappy has special structure named middleware. Uh, and uh, this middleware uh, intercepts this request and you can change it, change it uh, somehow. We will uh, discover this later. And then it transfers ultimate version of the request to engine. Then Scrappy engine makes this request and uh, uh, request disappears there and the response appears. And then uh, Scrappy sends the response uh, that been intercepted by middleware again. And then the response returns to callback function defined in request. And then after processing in callback function, if we extract some item, this item could be transferred to pipeline. It's, uh, this is the most complete schema uh, how the data is migrating from request to response and how it's, it's been processing. Uh, so let's uh, review how it look like how it looks like in the code. When you yield your request in Scrappy, you have to specify some arguments. Uh, only two of them are required. It, it first is, of course, target URL. And the second is callback. Callback is the name of function or method that will be processing the result of request. Then uh, we have some optional arguments, but very important as well. Uh, so the first of optional arguments is method. Method is uh, how how do you send your request get or post? Uh, default value is get. <coughs> and uh, you might be you might require post method when you send a login request, for example. And uh, then next setting is meta. Meta is additional service parameters. For example, you can specify proxies there. You can specify some additional data, uh, but this is not perfect practice. And we have uh, these settings. I will cover a bit later. Uh, then priority. Priority is uh, the number integer. And uh, unlike the networking, the higher number is, means that execution will be earlier. So the engine manages the queue of requests and uh, sorts them by priority from bigger values to smaller. Uh, then Scrappy uh, filters duplicate URL by, by default, but sometimes you you need to open some URLs twice, uh, and then you can specify this uh, option. Don't filter equals to true to 
read the, uh, this uh, URL again. And then if you need to specify your own parameters that uh, callback should process, you need to specify CB KW arcs. It's your ad additional user parameters and uh, they will be processed in your callback function. Okay, let's review some examples from real world. Uh, first request shows that uh, you use uh, post method. You use some body uh, for this method, which parameters to pass. And you see that this request performs login on the side. And you you specified callback, so this uh, answer from the server will re return to this function to process. Uh, so the uh, specific of this uh, request is that method is post and additional body and headers are specified. Moving to the next request. Uh, you see that uh, we have priority here and our special uh, CB KW arcs. We, we want to know uh, which category this product belongs to. Uh, you see that we have definitely product URL that uh, specifies um, some uh, specific product. And uh, we extract this category in the callback function. You see that uh, parsing the item is callback function. So we extract category here. And uh, this request will be executed uh, faster with higher pr priority. And the third example shows that we, uh, we also need uh, to obtain products uh, product item with higher priority and you, we make uh, for, form requests it's a subset of requests that means we deal with form and we specify also headers and body here and method is post uh, so in this way, uh, we can tune our request in very different ways and uh, achieve uh, very different results by changing these uh, parameters. Then let's uh, <coughs> review the priority request, uh, priority settings with more details. Um, if you checked uh, my first presentation you probably remember this schema how do we deal when we scrap in uh, online store first of all we get a list of categories and then we scrape entire category and obtain list of the products then if we have some next pages for the category we, uh, we send uh, the request for each next page, then scrap category again and uh, repeat until no next page has found. And um, if we extract some products URL, we scrape products details. And uh, let's check this with more details. For example, the site you, you are scrapping starts blocking you. Uh, due to high high activity and what happens if they block you here if they block you here uh, nothing much happens you just lo lose one product because of the block but uh, what happens if they block you here because technically this is just one request and this is just one request but here you can lo lose um, from 10 to 40, maybe 100 uh, products. It depends on how many products you have on the page. 
And what happens if you got blocked here? You lose entire category because this is technically one request as well. And you may lose around few thousands of the project. That's why uh, uh, analyzing site behavior and making the pr priority is important because you can specify to scrape everything here first, then scrape everything from here and here first, and only then scrape the products. Do not do not rush with scraping products. Uh, so uh, yeah, you can tune this behavior very deeply in this case in this uh, case and using priority setting. Uh, next, uh, let's review the most important settings in Scrappy that could be specified in the settings module. Uh, then not so much, not so many settings, but uh, they are quite important and use it really often. So let's start reviewing. Uh, first is download delay and download timeout. Uh, they are self-descriptive and describes how should how much time should you wait before the page downloading. It uh, might be used in several cases. First is to emulate human behavior. And then um, if you use some additional tools for JavaScript rendering to wait a bit before a page is being rendered, for example. Uh, download timeout. Um, how, how much time should you wait to uh, before receiving timeout error? Because you know some page might be unreachable, and uh, you uh, and you you should not wait forever to open it and just skip by timeout and move move forward. <clears throat> then uh, concurrent concurrent request and concurrent items. It uh, tunes the speed of the scrapping. Uh, it's obvious. Uh, if you have more concurrent requests, it means that more requests could be executed in parallel, simultaneously, and uh, you you will process much faster and uh, with maximum simultaneous request. And concurrent items mean that how many items you can receive at once and uh, process them so more concrete items uh, more speed but you should not uh, set these values uh, to you should not set these settings to big values because you can overload the site and get blocked it so the the quite common value is around 16, 32, maybe uh, things like that. Then uh, uh, if you deal with cookies, for example, when your spider uses login, uh, login or some uh, post operation, something like this, you may uh, enable cookie. Actually, I recommend always enable cookie because a site might block you without cookies. And if you have trouble logging, uh, you can debug your cookies with cookies debug uh, setting. They are Boolean, true or false. And in case of cookies debug equals to true, uh, you will see this debug information uh, in your logs, which cookies this, uh, the engine sends to site, which uh, cookies from response you received, and so on. Uh, downloader, downloader middlewares uh, sets up uh, connected middlewares. Middleware is a special mechanics that uh, can pro uh, 
process request additionally it will be reviewed uh, later in this presentation so um, you enable and set up the middlewares using these settings uh, the next item pip pipelines uh, it's the same as downloader downloader middlewares you turn them on using these settings pipelines will also be reviewed later in this presentation next part of settings is http error allowed codes uh, sometimes if you receive some error uh, code you know uh, this specific of your project that is not actually an error and you can specify such codes in this list and uh, the, the engine will not consider them as error and will uh, continue working also everything related to log files are here log file and log level log uh, this log file you specify log file location log file name and with log level you specify the depths and uh, details of your log is log level is pretty standard in for debug error and so on uh, then uh, retry times retry http codes uh, you know that web is not perfect and you may not open a page from first first time that's why retry mechanics exists and you can specify how many times you should retry after fail and uh, which code triggers retry on uh, then quite important settings is robots.txt ob you you might not be allowed to enter the site at all because of the robots.txt policies and you can tweak uh, this behavior using this setting this setting is boolean and the last but not least setting is user agent and user agent means how sites see the scrappy uh, for example is they can see a scrappy library or some browser and so on so it's pretty popular setting as well you can change it from spider to spider and depending of your needs also you can specify your own settings for your special uh, you know special needs and uh, it also depends on the project but you should know that you can specify your settings no problems here there uh, moving next um, uh, integration with site smart proxy we will use this in our uh, demonstration later and i will recommend if you're looking for the some proxy service i will recommend that because it's pretty easy to set up and it's pretty powerful uh, you see that mm, it's very easy to obtain the api key and you can integrate with literally three lines of code you sp you activate uh, activate download downloader middlewares using this uh, code you activate smart proxy and you uh, apply api key obtained here and then when it works you you see your statistics here and you pay only for clean requests for example if you have file with your request you got banned by site or something like this uh, site will rotate proxy automatically and <clears throat> and uh, give you a new proxy pool and uh, until success so it's pretty pretty powerful feature next um, if you remember we saved 
our outputs uh, from first presentation in CSV file. Scrappy can save this by default and everything is good. But what if you, you, you want to have more advanced uh, place to save? What if you collaborate with someone? And what if you want to have some enhanced analytics then? That's why pipelines exist. And we can uh, integrate Scrappy with database this. And uh, today I will show you how to integrate this. And we will use this simpler database with such structure. Uh, for each products, we have uh, this structure. We have key attributes and unique product ID generated by our database. And for each run, we will also write products history using product ID, run date, price, and stock level for further analysis, for example. So you can check historical data, average price of from a month, from year, and so on. So this integrations is such integrations are also pretty powerful. I will show you in practical part. Uh, then uh, <clears throat> when, when everything is going well and your project is growing and you have, uh, you have grown from 10 to 100, 200, 300 spiders and you need to launch around you know 30 to 50 spiders every day and uh, with some system some schedule and also you you need to know how did they work how did they perform how many items uh, each of them had scraped you need some solution that centralizes everything that has mechanics to schedule, to launch manually, to batch launch. And uh, also this solution should have some reporting subsystem. And fortunately, Scrappy has such integrations with Scrappy dashboards. Uh, dashboards provides this functionality and uh, in Scrappy you have Scrappy D. This is basic mechanics that uh, have scheduling, have login and the more, more advanced version of this is Scrappy D web. B uh, Scrappy D web ba is based on Scrappy D but uses web interface and it's uh, has also it also has uh, additional features i will show you in the practical part also there is online tools scrape ops uh, described uh, on their own site i will share a link with you so you can be familiar uh, how to install the dashboards it's pretty easy as well just pip install scrappy d scrappy d web also we need a log parser a log parser is required to parse uh, general statistics and uh, uh, items count and things like that after installing you should launch scrappy d and launch scrappy d web also you have to deploy your project in scrappy d format but it's pretty easy I will show you as well. Uh, next. Actually, the theoretical part is over at this stage and we are moving to practical part. Do you have any questions at this stage? Okay, if no questions, let's move to practical part. First of all, uh, I will remind you 
what have we done previously we have done uh, this spider omega manufacturing and the spider was able to save the data only locally and um, first uh, i have added another spider named brownells and the site is brownells.com brownells.com is american uh, store of weapons and you are not allowed by you are not allowed visiting the site let's check access to brownells.com was denied you don't have authorization to view this page actually they ban they bans by ip and you have to use some proxy to access the site and let's check our settings we have set up the proxy uh, smart proxy and we activated this proxy here that smart proxy and that smart proxy api key let's check if it works uh, you have a very useful function in scrappy open in browser and <clears throat> scrappy utils you have open in browser and you can apply it to response to check the response visually let's check open in browser and you see that we successfully entered the site brownells.com and we are able to scrape the data now uh, so this this is the first example how to use integrations to scrape uh, some advanced sites using smart site uh, smart proxy with uh, very easy integration uh, moving next um, let's review the third site named omega manufacturing the problem is that you can open it from the browser. Let's open. You see that you can open it from the browser, but if we open if you try to open this from postman and as a tool to test uh, how how it behaves in uh, such environment you will see that uh, sorry wrong site uh, sorry summit tracing summit tracing let's open first from the browser mega manufacturing was from first presentation you see that you can open it from the browser not a problem and when you try to open it from postman you see empty result and you see little of data it means that it requires browser and um, now the middleware steps in and help us i've decided to implement special middlewares that use uh, selenium <coughs> and uh, not just regular selenium but it advanced version let me show you uh, undetected chrome driver and we we have to make our special class for this uh, when we init 
our class we specify driver, web driver, and we specify specify the behavior here. Process request. We intercept our request and we process the request with driver. So we open the requested URL with the driver, with the, our automated browser, and then we transformed, uh, transform our response to special structure and send as a scrappy response. Let me show you in the presentation. So we, we send some requests, we intercept this in the middleware, open the link in the browser, then transform uh, response to scrappy response, and then send back. Uh, let's check. Remember that uh, we cannot uh, open this site summit tracing from script. Let's check how it uh, works with the browser scrapping. Uh, when I launch the script, uh, browser will be visible and it's possible to hide the browser using this option, headless equal true. And, uh, but I decided to make it visible just for educational purposes. Let's check. Starting. Oops. You see that uh, sometimes even the automated browser doesn't help. And <clears throat> to, uh, in this case, you can deal with capture manually or using additional services and uh, continue scrapping using the driver. Let's try again one more time. Let's make some debug point. Okay, you see that it's working now. It enters to product page and scrapes the details from each product. And you can hide the browser, as I said. And actually, as these sites I show you, I'm showing you now, I'm quite advanced and uh, should be set up carefully. You you can you can tweak your project using settings as I mentioned in the beginning of the presentations. You should specify weights, specify concurrent requests, and so on. And so we just uh, checked uh, request response middleware in the practice. Let's move next and. Let me show you how to implement pipeline. Uh, the pipeline uh, should be implemented as class special class with init and process item mm, methods. Uh, process item is a predefined name. You should use this name and you receive your item here as a parameter. In each spider, you have uh, item creation. When you 
when you checked some exact product, you create item, you specify each field and you return item. And now this item is intercepted by pipeline and this item is here. So you can apply some additional process in here. For example, we would like to clean the price and transform it to float. We would like to remove some dollar sign or extra commas from here and transform to dollar. We, we would also like to strip every string uh, values. And then we can execute our query to save the result into database. This is our query. We saved product and then we save product history as well. And we set up connection with the database when the pipeline is in, it, in initialization. You specify connection and cursor using PyODBC. Let me show you how it works. Um, here is our database with these tables. <coughs> uh, this is just example, so I created this locally. And we have some rows here for Omega Manufacturing. Let's run Brownells and let's check how it works. Let, uh, let return to Brownell Spider. We, we, you see that uh, after we parse every category, if we found product URL, we process this URL with parseful item. And during parseful item method, we extract every possible value to our item and we return this item. Then our item is processed by this SQL pipeline with method process item and it should be saved in the database. And our pipeline is enabled using this lines of code. So test projects, pipeline, SQL pipeline with some priority. If you specify uh, several pipelines, you should specify priorities as well in which uh, sequence your item should be processed. So uh, you see that test project, test project, pipelines, pipelines and SQL pipeline is here. SQL pipeline. We enable this and let's check. Start our spider. You see that connected. it's connecting to Smart Proxy Manager. By the way, scrapping is started. You, you see that we extracted some items. Let's check our database. And you see our database is growing and new records are related to brownells.com. Let's check. You see the prices, stock level, and date when we update. Let's also check our products history. Our products history is growing as well. We have more than 400 rows so far and it's closely related to products table. <coughs> then um, uh, moving to the next stage, uh, let me just show you the how the dashboard looks like real quick. So in this is the main page and our tool we are interested is Smart Proxy Manager. Smart, Smart Proxy Manager has usage stats and 
uh, you can filter it by clean, bound, and failed and analyze what's going on. Also, you can filter it by websites and by accounts if you have any. As I said, it's a paid uh, subscription, so you should pay some money. It depends on your plan you choose. But if you require some advanced scrapping from sites that bans, for example, if you scrape Amazon as well, or some enterprise level web shops like Walmart, you will need this for sure. So this is your uh, tool. Uh, next part is dashboards. <clears throat> As I said, uh, the most famous dashboards is ScrappyD and ScrappyD Web, and I will show you. Uh, honestly, I'm not a big fan. Let, let me just stop. I, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not a big fan of the dashboards because you can check everything in your database, for example, and you can use some dashboards from clouds and so on but is this option is pretty viable as well let me demonstrate so first you need to start uh, scrappy d this is it's already started and it's running on port uh, da, da, da. it's running on port 5 thousand if i'm not mistaken six six eighty but actually and it looks like this it's not graphical at all but it's very stable and uh, available projects are our project and um, available option is jobs and logs not that match and you see the uh, short instruction how to schedule a spider using curl uh, localhost 680 schedule json minus d minus spider and uh, but this is not pretty comfortable to use so let's move to scrappy d web Scrappy D web has a web interface and you can run everything and set up everything with the click of the mouse. The most interesting uh, parts are jobs and timer tasks. Let's start from jobs. <clears throat> you see that nothing is running now. Let's experiment with this. Let's start uh, some spider again from here. Uh, click on plus, select your project, it's test project, version default latest. Oops. Oops. Actually, that's why I'm not a big fan of the dashboards <laughs> because they are not pretty stable. Um, let me quickly figure out what's going on. We can. We should start Scrappy D first. Scrappy D is started. Then we start Scrappy. D web scrappy D web is started as well. Let's refresh. Mm. Okay, unfortunately, it's not working now no idea why it just worked right before the presentation but yeah but you can 
select project version on spider and click check cmd and you will receive something like this and then you click run spider and it will be running also in timer tasks you have the exactly the same window you can select project version on spider and also you can specify the schedule of this you can change this to just add task specify name and you see a small hints day from 1 to 31 hour from 0 to 23 minute and also day of week day of week supports multiple choice for example monday wednesday and friday something like this and also you click check cmd and that task and the task is scheduled also the jobs uh, has history of runs of the test project and uh, some statistics you see that i have launched this from scrappy web five days ago and <laughs> it runs successfully maybe it depends on your environment but it yeah it, sh it should work actually and uh, you can quickly check stats okay stats is not available and so the stats shows that <clears throat> uh, your items your links process it and so on just uh, as you see in the logs uh so this is probably it what i'd like to share returning to the agenda we reviewed request response in scrappy with details also we reviewed the settings and we reviewed integration with zeit smart proxy with real world example of making spider of brownells.com also we quickly reviewed dashboards we reviewed middlewares by adding selenium middleware and uh, we have seen the example of this also we have implemented pipelines uh, actually sql pipeline and uh, reviewed the example with the local sql database okay uh, maybe you have questions